Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Design Cinema. This is episode 62, Real-Time Creature Design. So let's just write that down right here, Creature Design. All right, so um, before I jump in here, let's set up some background information on what we are about to do. So there's a, in terms of creature design, that's a pretty wide range of things to cover. So I'm gonna focus on a specific type of design, and uh, and that type is the the little bit whimsical, a little bit over the top, kind of 50s, maybe a little bit funny kind of creature design. Uh, I think the best way to look at it are from the films such as Men in Black, uh, or say the Star Wars Cantina, right? So they're, they're a little bit lighthearted, a little bit whimsical. They're kind of entertaining. They're not really meant to be a creature design, um, say from a, a Discovery Channel that's supposed to dictate a a creature from another uh, a world or something like that, which has to be kind of biologically uh, maybe more makes sense or so, right? So we're, we're making these a uh, half character, I mean, half creature, a little bit of a character. So some of these guys uh, might be able to act on screen. So again, I think Made in Black, uh, the first few films, I think even the third one, I haven't seen the third one, so I have no idea, but the first two, at least, there are quite a bit of whimsical characters in there that, uh, you know, has has uh, a lot of speaking lines. All right, so let's jump in here. So uh, let's see, what, are, what am I doing? All right, so this is real time. Nothing's being fast forward. And uh, let's just start sketching. I'm, I'm gonna put my notes over here just for now. All right, so. Uh, uh, all right, what are we doing? Let's just um, just scribble some stuff. All right, so real time, so design, yay! All right, jump in and just start sketching. So um, let's shrink this guy down a little bit. Using a, just a simple little calligraphy brush. All right, let me adjust my mic a little bit so I could also take breaks to drink. So usually, generally, when I start, it's all about big, big forms. All right, so what I'm doing here, I kind of just scribble some stuff, and uh, as a result, we kind of have a design out of it. So let me see, let's grab some perspectives, some center line. All right. um, some other stuff I guess I'll talk about as a design. Um, you know, creature could take on so many different characteristics in terms of its shapes, its forms, but at the end of the day, we are designing for mass audience, uh, especially for, you know, just in case this is safe for a film like Men in Black. Uh, you're talking about millions of people who'll be watching this, and you want your designs to be somewhat relatable to uh, to everybody. So, you know, if you look at the creatures on this planet alone, there are so many variations of, uh, you know, you got insects and you have, uh, uh, let's see, mammals and birds and all these, and each one of them has, there's so many, so many different variations among each each um, category or species or origins, right, of um, uh, characters or creatures. But if you look at film design in general or uh, more entertainment stuff, especially if the creature takes on talking roles, these creatures tend to be human-esque in the way they appear because that's how we relate to things like a talk, or at least they have a face or something like that. So that is a little bit of a restriction sometimes when you're dealing with certain type of projects in which your creatures have to take on this persona. So uh, I'm gonna try to avoid that slightly here. Not, let me delete the stuff on top because now if I rotate, it becomes hard, okay? Uh, I'll try to avoid that a little bit, but still, I'm gonna try to put that whimsical touch into the design if I can. All right, so I'm drawing real time. It's a little tricky to, to talk. This stuff here is a little bit harder than your kind of speed painting stuff, like the last episode with the flashback stuff. Um, because painting, you could kind of mess around a little bit. I guess that's the best way to put it. And get some interesting shapes. When it comes to this, um, because we're so close and zoomed in, we have to actually spend some time thinking about the design itself. So the closer you are to an object, the harder it tends to be because you are focused on um, very specific detail, something you can't just fudge around and somehow get a solution out of it. So I'm actually trying to think like, for example, his foot placements, the perspective on that, the joint design. So this guy's kind of weird. Um, he probably walks around. He's, he's got six limbs. I think I need to make six limbs because he's a little bit unbalanced at this point. He's got this little nasty little um, insect belly thing. I'm not even sure what kind of category you put him in. He's reptilian slash insect or something. He's got these little snail eyes. Maybe put up up here. All right, let's put some perspectives across. Little snail eyes. All right, it's all very loose because at this point, the most important thing for me is to get the design and the forms out and not really how nice the line work is. Not yet. We'll fix all that later. Little finger, little finger. All right, so let's see. He's got this back lay that kind of goes around this way and comes back down. Now I don't want to block the the back foot there, so I need to move his position slightly 
to allow that to show. So this would be a little support arm, a little ankle thing. This arm here, the middle one now, needs to come out a little bit in order for him to have balance. Oops, come on, close them, just lassoing. Just gonna move it out about to about here for that to support his body. So the weight could be, to be uh, manageable. The center of gravity won't be so off, right? That makes his hand over here, somewhere there. This is another limb. The other side of that guy will be about here. Go up, other side. Okay, so let's figure out his ground plane here. So one ground plane, two ground plane, three, take the center. We should be able to get a perspective out of that. We should get a perspective out of that. Just checking to make sure this guy is sitting in 3D space, right? Creatures and vehicles and environments, doesn't really matter uh, what they are. They are all 3D objects and they sit in a 3D space. So when you're doing these designs, you gotta make sure that these things are also sitting in 3D space. So just in case you have to put a character or put him into a scene, you already solved the, uh, the difficult problems. <laughs> all right, so I think that limb will go there. That's kind of cool. All right, so this guy's he's kind of neat-ish. He's got a funky, Characteristic. Well, by the way, his face is that way, so we're looking uh, at him from behind. So, and it just happened from the scribble that uh, I just made up when I first started this show. So, sorry if I'm, my talking is a little bit off right now because, again, this is a little bit more challenging to do in real time because I cannot really um, talk and then think about design solutions that go here. Because a lot of stuff in here, like what I'm drawing right now, these are all solutions right now of his eye stock and what, what do I do with the top of his head? Do I like give him a crazy hair like that or give him some antennas that goes back? These are these are all things that takes a little bit of thought. So right now I'm trying to split my brain twice to talk to you guys as well as uh, think about what to do about those things. So yeah, again, the, the closer you are to something, the more specific it is. For example, you're drawing an iPad, drawing an iPad uh, we're designing one, you know, designing one that has to have a spec of iPad. Uh, in my opinion, it's much, much harder than doing a speed painting. <laughs> Even though speed painting looks cooler in a shorter amount of time, um, it's actually much, uh, and more complex in a way, but it's actually much, much easier to do than uh, these kind of things. All right, so this guy's he's, he's kind of cool. So I'm, I'm just going to put him to the side here. I'm going to start a new layer, do another one. So uh, let's, let's scribble something else. We'll just scribble stuff in. All right, just kind of get a nice contour. And um, and then put some nice perspective in it, drop it, and then let's turn this into a creature. Let's see what we get. All right. Um, all right. A little bit of a mind's eye type of stuff. So as you draw, you tend to see things. And if you see it, then we convert it. And this has a way to work, especially for these kind of zero spec designs uh, where things we're just kind of doing for fun. There is a spec, kind of bending black creatures or something, or Star Wars Cantina, right? I always like those. Those are things I, uh, I, but thing is, when I watched it as a kid, those creatures are pretty creepy. But now, if you watch it as an adult, they're they're kind of fun, because they have guys with like four eyes and um, crazy um, skin textures. All right, let's see. Let's get this guy. So you can see his uh, his his eyes are right there. He's got this kind of nose. All right, so he's looking that away. What do I do with his body though? Let's give it a thin neck. It's got a little bit of a Adam's apple right there. His neck is kind of not so cool. I'm gonna give him a special bend in the neck. Let's give him a let's give him a bend right here. Let's give him like a little bit of a character. In terms of his personality and his animation pose. All right, let's give him a belly. Hips go inside there. All right, just scribble around. He's gonna have an arm. I'm gonna shrink him down a little bit. He's a little big right now on the page. Whoa! I messed with his proportions as I scaled him, which isn't a big deal. But no. all right, let's see his legs, his kneecap. So, like I, was, uh, I, was, I mentioned earlier, when we're designing, even though there's so many different variations of creatures uh, to do, like you know, a snail or a, a giraffe versus a um, octopus, you know, that that's just from this planet. Uh, but it's very hard to give these characters a talking role. I mean, you could give a give an octopus a talking role, I guess, but it's a little trickier for mainstream type of designs in which these guys have to hold a uh, screen space, right? have dialogue with, say, your meet act, um, with your main actor or something like that. So they tend to take on a humanoid form. And if you look at entertainment in general for in terms of alien designs in, in major entertainment context, entertainment context, uh, they all have a, a bipedal, I mean, most of them are bipedal and they have facial features like humans. Right, they have eyes, nose, and stuff like that, in which we talk about a, 
a real creature such as a uh, sea slug or um, or a um, octopus they have those features but is definitely not human um, but those creatures again makes it pretty hard to act this guy's still blue this guy's coming out kind of generic so let's let's throw in maybe a big arm or something just to throw off that generic thing he's got these big uh, kind of froggy webbed hands just do that it's kind of neat He's not so dynamic yet, so let's make it a little bit dynamic. Make sure he's centered to his self. Little back legs. That's a big arm, so I'm gonna have to develop a pretty strong shoulder to support that. So a little clavicle goes in. Let's get a little rib cage in there. Alright, a little rib cage there. That's the center of the rib. Go in. Go in this way. That's the belly. Go here. That's the hips. Pelvis to leg to femur to knee all right so carry that down so he's a little bit more he's th this guy's definitely more humanoid than the, well, way more humanoid than the first creature that we did it's cool give clients some diversification so just in case they're freaked out by um, the first creature you did they're like what the heck are you doing with that first design that is not what we want we want a actor character so then you have a backup you have this guy you're like well how about this guy Right, let's see, let's draw the other side of the uh, his arm, and he's kind of resting that other arm. And whoops, that's a Photoshop bug. Well, not Photoshop. That's a Wacom bug, which they still haven't fixed after so long. Right, which is a kind of a whenever he loses uh, focus or some other program is doing something, it tends to lose sensitivity. So maybe that's a pretty difficult problem to solve. I don't know. It's been around for a long time. <clears throat> but you get very used to it in production. You just quickly undo it when that happens. All right. So they're, they're still all lo very loose uh, because it doesn't matter right now after the main form and the main design. All right, so his let's check to see if it's lopsided <clears throat> right, by flipping him back and forth. All right. Oh, let me check the time. Okay, 12 minutes. Okay, not bad. You can see these are actually a lot slower in terms of uh, what you're getting for the time than if you watched last week on the flashback um, episode thing. I think in 12 minutes, we're, we're like already got the painting to find you know that's how quick paintings are when you compare when you compare it to line drawing line drawing in generous is a lot slower because you can't hide you see in, in digital painting you can hide a lot of details as you paint like you can just do some dots and that could rec um, uh, represent a field of uh, plants or mushrooms or something like that just by doing little dots uh, when it comes to line drawing however you, know, you can't do that you have to actually sort of draw it right there are places in which you can indicate but they're not as easy to do than um, than a painting. So that, therefore, these things take longer. You have to really check your perspective. It's just less areas for you to hide, I guess. So those who are professionals who do this and watching this video know what I'm talking about. There, in digital painting, there's so many ways to indicate, to uh, get something to read extremely quick. Like even a face, you could just do um, perhaps the drop shadow from the eye socket and the drop shadow from the nose, and you can indicate a guy who's very angry uh, in a crowd or something like that. But in line drawing, you sort of have to, you have a little bit more line work to do to, to express that. So more strokes per page, I guess, is the way to do it. All right, so this guy's sort of there. All right, our this is our safe. He looks kind of like E.T.'s grandfather or something. Kind of like he's got a similar form. Oh well, he look he works for me. I guess let me see. It's pretty low res right now. This is only a um, I think it's like a three thousand. I don't know. Let's check it just to show you guys. All right, it's only thirty seven hundred pixels across, uh, three hundred DPI. So it's not a very big image. So at this level, I'm zooming in. It's actually already pixelating. The resolution is low. Let's give him some. Uh, little tentacle things just some fun stuff for the animators to rig and to uh, simulate all right cool so let's just drop this guy over here whoops flip him over here let's move this guy a little bit out of the way maybe shrink him down a little bit it's kind of big okay and we have room to do uh, to do one more let's see 14 minutes I guess I just keep recording here versus stopping all right, let's do last one. That's um, let's make one that's a little weird. Let's see. I guess the first one's already pretty weird, but let's let's go for something even more bizarre. Let's see. Do 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 do. Scribble, 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 scribble. Find the perspective. Find the center point and draw from there. 
All right, what am I doing? I don't know. Whoops, there's a bug again. Let's make this one just a little bit more less humanish and make it more like a creature creature. Uh, if you guys are into creature design, especially the ones that are kind of more scientifically based, take a look at the um, this designer named John, uh, Wayne Barlow. He's got some really cool stuff. I grew up with a lot of his designs when I was young because um, he did uh, he made a book, um, I forgot exactly what it's called, but it's kind of like a probe that goes out to uh, different planets and uh, captures aliens, you know, like take a photo of it or something like that, in which he just drew. Um, so this one book has so many different alien creatures in it. It was super entertaining as a young kid because you just like, you could read the bio for each one. Uh, quite cool. And a lot of his creature designs are based off uh, science. So they sort of have a scientific uh, uh, analogy behind them. So I think he has... For example, a planet that never developed eyeballs, uh, what will the creature be like? You know, so I think he has solutions such as they'll use sonar. Um, so the sonar cone in front of their, all, all of them have a sonar kind of device in front of their eyes. Oh, uh, if not, no eyes in front of their head. Right? It's kind of cool. It's kind of like a different way to go about creature design by changing the world uh, around it. Versus what I'm doing right now is just complete form design. There is no, I'm not putting any signs behind these things at all. So. Because again, the spec calls for that, right? We're, we're dealing with kind of many black type of situation here or Star Wars Cantina. We could almost make up the science fact after we design it, you know, versus before. So we're very different if you're designing for say something like um, like Avatar or something like that kind of movie in which there's quite a bit of science involved when you're designing for a giant planet like uh, Pandora and uh, you have like maybe certain kind of nitrogen intake in the air and oxygen ratios and stuff like that then you can start planning like okay what what a creature look like if that's the atmosphere of uh, this planet so versus this one just to look just need our spec just to make it look kind of cool that's about it which is more fun I think for the designer not well, depending on what you're doing I guess on a less stressful day this would be more fun when you're dealing with a lot of stress the other kind of stuff could be pretty challenging. All right, so this guy's becoming like an ant deer. That's what we'll call it, the ant deer. Because he's got the anatomy, sort of the anatomy of an ant, but it's got the posture of a deer. So let's call him the ant deer. All right. And then let's up here make him the caterpillar. So he's like crazy lost identity creature. Let's give him some eye stocks too. What should we do with his eyes? So there's the perspective for that. Mwah. Little mwah. Make some noise, All right? So you guys, last episode you see me doing that. So gotta keep myself entertained. I'm doing this, otherwise I keep too involved in, in talking to you guys and forget what I'm doing. So make some noise, kind of uh, get your brain to the zone. All right, there. That's his eye stock. Doink doink. Give him a little brain back here, a little nose. This guy's definitely have a snail head going here. Maybe these little stocks here are for like feeding himself when he's like gorging on uh, whatever he, he eats on his home planet. I'm gonna put a little bit of bone. This guy is kind of insectile like, insectoid like, but I'm gonna give him some mammalian features. To just make him a little bit more stronger than he seems. Let's make so this part here, like this part here, should be all like bug, bug-like, kind of semi-transparent. And uh, you know how bugs have these. Uh, where's the center line here? Is the center line have like sometimes they have these little spikes and antennas sticking out the back of their um, abdomen. Let's put something like that too. More, more. Okay. So his butt's like way in the air. Got a little strange posture. His little little support hands All right, this guy's gonna have a little harder time acting on screen but you never know we could always build a face the animators could build a face into him um, and then we could uh, go from there alright let's uh, increase his size so let's maximize let me hide the uh, let me hide the the uh, layer so move these guys take a look the maximize their wow, change the scale again maximize their size let's go for the second one Maximize his size, right? so that way there's more, just more paper basically to draw at. 
it's digital. Digital paper is free. So this is something that we didn't have the luxury of doing back in the days. Actually, we could have. The way we did it was uh, we photocopy it onto a bigger paper. So let's right, see. So that these guys are now fitting. I kind of designed everybody to sort of fit nicely together on the page. They eat into each other's negative space. So during presentations, it will look pretty nice. All right, so that's good. So this guy is looking this way. This guy is looking that way. This guy is looking back this way. I think that's a good comp. Let's try this real quick. So I eat up everybody's space. This is not probably not the best because the, both of these guys are kind of insect-like. So I think I'm gonna keep them separated like this. Let's just undo those. So this guy still looks better going this way, in my opinion. Let's try this middle guy going this way instead, and this guy going this way instead. What does that give us? Okay, now why am I doing all this? This is all for a presentation, for composition. So it's not that big of a deal because you can always break these guys into individual drawings at the end of the day. So I'm just doing this for my own compositional sake to see like, does it look cool or not? All right, I think this is the winning comp for now. So I'm gonna save this guy. All right, so this is our rough comp and let me just pause the video and uh, start in part two in a second here. All right, so now I'm back and I'm going to start detailing these guys. Um, so yeah, let's just jump in. Um, I'm gonna save, so these guys are on different layers right now. So I will save these guys onto, uh, I'll save their layers just in case I screw it up. Um, so you can see, let's, for example, let's start with the, the first one we did. Let's gonna make a copy of that, save the original because I'm gonna work directly off of um, this rough sketch. I'm not gonna do an overlay at all. I'm just gonna draw right on top of it. And so here's the detail layer. This is where it gets a little bit more fun because uh, I'm gonna hide the other guys as well so it doesn't confuse me. So I can just keep this guy here. All right. So we don't have too many stuff on the page. This is where it gets fun because your major forms are done. You don't have to worry about like, okay, what am I designing at this point? You, you sort of have it. And all you're doing right now is just detail work, which is really, really fun. Uh, if your visual library is pretty strong, you could kind of make this stuff up pretty quickly. Right. I'm still working relatively low res. Depends on how high I want to push this guy or what the end result of this might be. If my end result is a digital painting, uh, which I probably would do. Uh, I don't know, depending on how much time I got, I guess. If I could paint this guy up as a final, I might not necessarily have to make this part super, super detailed uh, because a painting will add in the uh, the last level detail. But uh, having a like, good line art is pretty important because even if the painting say, I, I really suck at painting today, uh, at least I have a drawing that hopefully wouldn't suck as bad. So um, it's always good to have a safety net. In this business, because we are production based, you all, you cannot, uh, at least freelance, okay, I'm not speaking for guys in house. In, in terms of freelance, it's very bad for your career to, uh, to not show anything or not deliver when the due date is showing up. So, and deliver bad work, for example. So we're always kind of looking out for ways to create backups as we work, um, if that makes sense at all. All right, so we have a line drawing, that, that's your backup, even though our final is supposed to be a, um, a painting but the backup is, is there, a nice line drawing. You know, because you never know, you have a bad day or you know, maybe I'm just really bad at painting. Um, whatever, where the client thinks I'm really bad, who, who, who knows, right, whatever that is. Uh, hopefully you do a nice line drawing that'll make up for it. Or that's the only thing you show in, in that case, right, if your stuff came out pretty horrible. Right, so here's the um, crazy eye star creature, miscellaneous identity, identity crisis creature. No idea what to call these guys, but it's fun. You know, designing for the men in black type of creatures are, are really, really entertaining because it's it's kind of wacky. A little bit easier to do, in my opinion. Then, yeah, so if like National Geographic commissioned you to to work on a piece for, um, or do a design for a series um, on television or something about the creatures of outer space planets or something, and the planet is full of gas and it's in like, high, actually it'd be like maybe low gravity or something. And then they want you to kind of uh, using some scientific um, breakdown to design some creatures. That's a little trickier. You have to kind of do a little bit of math, or not math, but a little bit more critical thinking. So you don't you don't just draw random for the sake of random. Whereas this case is, it's almost like just random. Right. But still hard to talk as a result. All right, All right let me figure out what the, what the heck's going on here before I confuse myself. He's got one eye coming out from the front. 
He's got one coming out from the side, being supported by this little muscle group here. And he's got one back here that goes that way. And that's the perspective check. That guy, we cannot see it. That guy, we checked already. Okay, good. So it's got, um, how many eyes is that? Six? Six pairs of eyes, or three pairs of eyes. And uh, three pairs of uh, legs. So this is his main arm, so let's make this one very, very muscular. Let's define some muscle groups as we go here. So he's going to have a crease here due to the compression of his uh, body. So big crease around here to allow that to, you know, we have to have the extra skin here just in case this guy larches up that way. We'll have enough uh, skin here for him to do that move. Right? And also when the animators are rigging these guys, they allow that, um, especially talking about games or something, they'll pre-build some polygons uh, mesh there for stretching. All right, let's see. So that's a big crease. Indicate that. All right, let's work on this big giant arm. So let's see. So that's this is rotational joint. So this is the axes. All right, if I draw the axes, is that's a rotational point. So therefore, we'll got to undo that big line there. And it's got this kind of a shark fin spike at the end of it. The reason why I rotate is because the brush I'm using is, um, as you can see, if I if I make this brush bigger, you can see, it's kind of it looks like that, right? So it makes very thick lines going this way, very thin line going this way. So if I want a thick line, I just go this way. But if I want a thick line going this way, I have to rotate the page, as you can see, uh, or rotate him, see, like that, right? So I can get a thick line going that way, if, if that makes sense. So that's why I keep rotating the image for actually for to get the line quality. Go back to this line here. Because line weight is important when you're sketching. Assuming you're dealing, you're gonna turn in just a sketch. In this case, we're kind of assuming that as well. Um, so if you're if you're dealing with just a sketch, then you want your line weight to be really nice and fluid, professional. So when someone looks at it, they, they assume a student. I mean, not a, a none student did the work due to your um, line weight experience. This guy's eyes are a little small. I wonder if I should make it a little bigger. He looks okay though. Let's make this part a little bit more uniform all right let's come down let's continue working on his arms so it's got a big muscle there let's do a big muscle group here it's all stretchy muscles this will be a bump right here for that muscle to come in you'll have probably some kind of rib cage thing something for lungs let's run this line over so this is the shark fin here which could create a nice little silhouette for him. I think it's these hairs. I need to make these hairs a little bit longer, or tentacles, whatever these are. Let's make it just a little bit longer experiment. With it. Or he might not have it at all. Let's, I'm going to erase it for now because they're kind of competing with his eye stalks. So I'm going to take them out for now. Right. We could always refine. That's the beauty of digital, is that um, as you do this, everything that's you know you consider this drawing tighter, you could always draw another pass on top of it by resing up your image, and it gets tighter and tighter and tighter. So we could always go back and fix things. It's not that big of a deal. We'll get everything correct at this point. Um, right now, the important thing is to move the production forward, so you don't get stuck and just stay there staring at your image, not producing anything. Right. So if something gets me stuck, like do I really keep the spikes or not? Eh, we'll deal with that when the time comes. Right? Maybe when I get the rest of this drawn out, it'll look alright again. Then we don't need to uh, worry. We just put, you know, leave it without the, the um, spiky stalks. Let's make sure these two matches up in terms of their line flows. It's got a little bit of a negative to a positive, so we gotta do a negative, a little positive. So we know that these are the same thing. But it's at a slight angle, so I need to build that in a little bit. Because it's going away from eye, right? Top view is like that, right? So top view, here's a creature. So it's kind of coming out at you at a, at a certain angle. So it's not gonna be parallel, right? It's kind of like the fins of uh, on an F-18. Which I'm gonna do a little bit of calculation to make sure I got that correct. Using some perspective calculations. All right, I think that looks all right. 
All right. You raised a perspective check. And the cool thing is all those perspective checks and little marks you do on the page, those things all tend to help your drawing look pro. It's um, these foundation building blocks. Right, I gotta put his uh, elbow in here. His elbow will be here. Which I think on this guy will be over here. Backside. Okay, his back will continue in. Give him some indication of backbone or spinal cord. Let's put some spinal cord here as well. Just at least indicate it. Okay, continue that. Let's figure out his hands or his um, whatever this finger thing is. Let's see, let's make the posture here. I think we need one that goes back. That hits the floor. Give him a pad. Raise out. He's got another one that comes to the side. All right, you can see how loose I do these, right? Because I'm trying to figure out the designs I go. And I can always, again, clean up once I know the design. Because right, I know the form is taking place. I know what's sort of happening there. But it hasn't been figured out it's in terms of how do I actually build that. Right? You don't want to confuse the next guy um, building this guy for you, the 3D artist. Or you're going to take this to ZBrush. You have some idea of how this is constructed. Because nowadays, a lot of creature designers are working directly in ZBrush. Right? Some might have a sketch before they get started for client approval. Um, so you want to try to solve some of the problems beforehand. But it's not necessary all the case all the time because happy accidents is a very important part of design. So sometimes you haven't figured it out, maybe you just figure it out in the next phase. Doing the three D production side. If assuming you're doing it yourself, you don't wanna I don't think you want to be putting a lot of design work or difficult problem solving to a three D artist whose job is to model your work. So if you put that on their to do list, you're just adding more to their hours and I don't think that could be appreciated by, by certain kind of uh, modelers. Right? Some might like it, some might not. So I'm, what I'm referring to is if you're going to model this yourself in ZBrush, then you want to have some of the problems solved. All right, so here's a four elbow. As you can see, so this goes that way. That would be like a little, that would be like a wrist or something like that. That would be the elbow, that would be the wrist. This would be fingers going way down. And so his fingers has been... Uh, Elongated, kind of like a horse or something, right? Horse's leg is actually like a giant finger. <laughs> okay, let's see. Symmetricalize that sucker. All right, let's see. Let's work on the belly. Let's work on the other side. So let's see. His spine goes under and form his belly. Oh, let's do these back legs, right? So these legs here are. Uh, a little tricky, so they start. Where should they start? I think they start down here. Let's give it. Let's just start it right here, right behind these two. So it's a minor muscle. Its job is to hold this creature. Its back support. All right? It's kind of like acting the role a, of a tail, say on a very uh, large predator, maybe like a lion or a tiger. Right? Their tail acts as a counterweight. So when they jump. And do these kind of things, it'll, it'll have give them a little bit of support by using weight and gravity. In this case, it's working similarly, except it's actually touching the ground. So it is a hand, but uh, or a limb, but I don't need to be it to be a major muscle group since it's holding up not too much weight. Most of the weight is distributed on these four um, areas. So these guys are acting as just a little side support. But that's the joint that comes out. That will be the elbow. This will be the wrist, and the rest will be a finger. I'm going to put a little pad right here. This pad's in the air, and that's for preparation of if this guy was to lean back. You can see this guy, it's kind of like a high heel shoe. I try it here. It's like this. Right, so that's the design. So if this guy ever leans back, we have a catch, like so. All right, so this guy could come back and catch the, uh, catch the ground. So that's what that's for. Let me get rid of that. Let me lasso that out. Boom. All right, so that's the uh, little heel to catch any kind of fall. Right? You see airplanes have that, like you know some of the um, um, big airliners or like Russian 
transports they have like little wheels on their back of their uh, fuselage is for just in case the um, plane lands with the tail too low it, you won't hit the fuselage and damage it they have these little wheels on the bottom so this will be what that that does all right so most of the time this creature is not using that finger okay and these things will make notes i mean for if this is a, a design for submission for 3d modeling uh, i will make notes for the creature designer to let him know that that's what's for so he'll pre-rig it uh, with a bone to allow that animation all right let's see so this let me not oh, I almost messed up here this leg is on the inside it's, so there it is then it goes to the other side right make sure I just draw that a little bit lighter in terms of line weight so that's going this way out and the little heels and toe all right since there are two of these there's uh, you know again one there's two I don't have to draw the second one so nicely because your 3d modeler got the information from the first one Right. So whenever you're drawing something that's repeatable or mirrored, you can save a little bit of time by drawing just one of it. The perspective on this guy is slightly wrong. That needs to go out. Let me see. It needs to go out that way and come back in. Because the knee joint is going out and then in. So um, top view, if this is a creature's leg, it goes out and then in and like that. So out and then in and like that. His top arm, right? this is top view here, is going doom, boom like that, grabbing boom boom like that and his front arm is doing that all right so that's his top view so these legs are kind of like almost like a frog leg <clears throat> all right so the knee joint here which will be here all right these two are the same joints here that is to go out of the body in perspective and back in which will be that line here and then back down which will be this part here okay so we have to um, account for that in perspective so there's the other side go in joint and then that comes back in okay cool whoops that joint's a little too low all right cool that's better and that stuff is important especially going to paint these guys up uh, then there's going to be some values on this and we need to know where that value will be okay here's the ladies high heel shoes that he's got on all right so what, what do we have left here let's uh let's clean up this guy here we are um 15 minutes into the sketch what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw this guy and probably apply the same formula for the other guys as well I'll see how much I could do maybe I'll draw one more and then I'll draw the rest of it uh, without recording so we don't spend uh, too much time in real time otherwise this video will be like two three hours long All right, but hopefully this helps you guys to see that there's no there's no magic really you know whatever that word you like to use it's just it just work you just sit down and just draw that's it and have fun with it of course right this kind of stuff is extremely fun for me to draw because I don't get to do this much on the, on the job I'm currently on so it's fun to take a break from your usual freelance and do some of this stuff most of the work I take on it's just personal choice are sci-fi and military based so because that's the kind of projects i personally like to do so i tend to draw those for my day job and um, creature designs i don't do too much of it's fun but it's not my specialty it's not what um, my um, favorite categories would be but as a designer you, you tend to enjoy everything everything is cool everything is fun all right, let's give it some. So he's like, butt is like in the air. I want this uh, bend to be a little bit more aggressive. Right now, it's kind of flat. This line's flat. I want his anatomy to be like, like that. So we take on a curve. Which let's just remind ourselves we want a curve like that. So more fun, a little bit more fluid. So let's build that in. So that means we have to have this section here, go in, and come out. A little tricky because we're back viewed. So it's harder to see that transitional point. Let's see, so we don't want that tangent here either with this arm. So there's a big muscle group that comes in and then the belly comes back out. Let's see if that reads. All right, that's better. Okay, that means this line here has to conclude down below. Now the tangent right here to avoid. So let's bring it down the tangent to avoid that. And bring that all the way around, all the way around. 
Cool, so that's his belly. Let's clean up these lines a little bit to make sure we know which one are sketch lines and which is our actually form lines. So a big fold again from here due to skin compression. All right, and those folds will be folding this way. And big round belly. Give some second or third level appendages out there. Just doing kind of, kind of fun. These are very guyish creatures, you know, kind of bug like, disgusting kind of stuff. Not cute. Okay. Delete this line or lasso that sucker out. Boink. As you can see, the sketch is taking about 20 minutes to do. Um, along the 20 minutes, the initial drawings took. But these will be faster if I wasn't talking. So because a lot of decisions I'm doing, uh, I'll just have done it already as I sketch it. But right now, um, I'm actually trying to fix it real time or just thinking it out for you guys so you can see the kind of process I, it goes through. Right. In real time, if I wasn't talking, this would probably take, I'm um, guessing, about 10 minutes to, to ink. Relatively quick. All right. But coming out just in 20 minutes, I think the previous one was 20 minutes. So right now, 40 minutes in. All right, so I should have time to do one more of these guys in this kind of work. All right, so let me try the other side of the arms. Let's clean up the other side, get rid of the ground lines. Our calculation lines are now gone. But I'm gonna keep the ground lines in because I need to make sure I see the distance is still in the center. So that's the center, that's the center, right? Find the center of this creature. Center, center, center. <coughs> so now we can calculate the other side of the legs. There's one leg, there's one other one. The joint for this guy is over here. That needs to go in. Okay, finger. Finger. This stuff is still not super defined yet, but uh, I could do that later. Other side, so that's the middle. So his hand is right around here. Finger, go up, finger out. So combining a lot of um, perspective along with anatomy to make this creature. Because everything sits in 3D space. Okay. And once you know that, you know, that's that's the fundamental stuff I always refer to. Once you understand how everything sits in 3D space, you can actually pretty much draw whatever you want. Uh, because all the same thing. It's just a 3D object. So all you're changing are the, the forms that make up that 3D object, but they all sit in 3D space. A human being, a car, you know, the, the entire planet, it's all sitting in a, just a 3D, three dimensional area. So if you know how to calculate using, and perspective allows you to basically calculate anything perspective uh, in, uh, in 3D space. Perspective is not a box, you know, which a lot of kind of students learn. That's the furthest they take it, is like a box sitting in a two point perspective or something like that. Um, they, you know, you gotta, you gotta remember that that box represents everything that exists in three dimensional space. And once you know how to complex, uh, you know how to com uh, plot that in a complex way, you could plot everything from a, um, you know, you could plot an ant to a person's face, to a house, to a Volkswagen Beetle, uh, you know, it doesn't matter. They're, they're all three, they're all same thing. All right. And that's the kind of diversity a lot of professionals have that they could work from one subject matter to another. There isn't a thing like, oh, um, you know, I, I only do, um, props or I only do vehicles or I only do characters. You know, they tend to be able to do like, oh yeah, whatever, you know, as long as it's design required, I could take it on. There's no there's no um, separation between say a creature or a character and there's not even separation between themes. Like you could go sci-fi and go fantasy um, right after another. So it all depends. The, what we tend to do is you take on stuff that interests us. It's not really like we cannot do it. It's more of like, okay, I, I really don't feel like working on a um, New York in the 1970s, uh, game right now so I don't want to take it on but in another time maybe I do feel like working on that then you take on that project but it's, it's not the can I draw it that, that that's stopping you from taking the projects alright All right, so and because that's the kind of stuff we sense you know a lot of students that come in young without kind of formal education they generally draw by memory which I talked talk, uh, talk about before and by drawing by memory, you change the subject matter, all of a sudden they're stuck, right? They might be mem they memorize how to draw, say, a, uh, a certain character's face or something, uh, or a certain kind of uh, uh, landscape. And then you tell them, hey, don't do that anymore. Now draw me a, um, 
uh, a western with a cowboy and then uh, they forget everything because it's muscle memory and muscle memory doesn't help you when the subject changes <laughs> which is with 3d then it doesn't matter at all all right let's see draw that in add some muscle lines Ooh, look at that that's cool whoa that's cool <clears throat> I, don't, I don't use this feature at all this is a, a new to photoshop where you can hold the zoom key and the wacom and it does this cool little oh how do i do that whoops it does this kind of dynamic zoom it's like warping needle huh but i'm still old school i still do the uh you know the 33 to 55 or 50 percent to 66 zoom levels which is just pressing the zoom key once but sometimes by accident I get, whoa, look at that. Now I'm putting stuff in there that's not supposed to be in there. Because I don't use it, so the hotkey, I only, it only comes out when I do it by accident. All right. Let's do this join here. Hopefully this is entertaining you guys. It's not as fun, in my opinion, as digital painting for, for the audience to watch. But uh, hey, there's plenty of other episodes if you reported this one to watch. And we've got plenty coming up in the future as well. All right. Got to cover all the bases, right? for different uh, people out there. Okay, draw that in. I think this guy's good for now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put him over here. I'm gonna pause the video for a second and come back and do the other guys. All right, All right. I am back. So before I get to the next one, I'm going to, okay, uh, fix this little finger a little bit. It's, this part is still a little confusing as I, when I was just waiting for the video to save, I noticed this part here is still a little bit uh, rough. So let me clean that up. And not necessarily super super clean, but just a tiny bit. And I also want to show you uh, where's the previous, right? This is what we, uh, whoops, where we have it. This is what we started with. So you can see within 20 minutes the uh, the difference in terms of line work that you put in. So, but nothing really hasn't changed in terms of design. It's, it's the same creature if you zoom out. Okay. So just line quality has increased. That's all. Okay. So let's let's just do another one real quick now I don't know if I have enough time to detail everybody out so I'll get started with this guy I'll make a copy of him as well I'll get started the same process and then if I don't finish it I mean if the time's running a little long what I'll do is I'll just finish the rest in uh, on my own time and show you guys the result of it right so because the process is the same as the, uh, the previous one but let's get some of this guy nail out this is kind of cool that little feature here so this guy's the one that's a little bit more human-ish. Right? He's got almost the same anatomy as a human being in terms of the, the parts of his body. Versus this guy already has like six limbs and all that kind of stuff, which is already quite different. This guy here might still have the shoulders, might still have the uh, the clavicle bone, all that kind of stuff. This, this shares similar features as us. All right, so his perspective is going like that. Get that nerve, get the back of the skull, cranium connected to the spinal cord. Give him this kind of tentacle hair. See his mouth's probably over here. This guy's a little bit low res. I mean, this image is pretty low res. So I can't actually get in there and draw the super fine detail because this is already 150% zoom at this point. So we're beyond the one-to-one -one zoom. So you can see the pixels up, uh, now appearing. So I don't have enough pixels basically to draw the uh, details in here which I could do later when I res this up I don't want to res it up at this point because the, the higher res it the slower your file gets right so keep it nice and quick and also if you res it up my brush has to increase in size I like drawing with this size brush right now because it's really fluid um, if I increase it this brush will become like a thin little pixel uh, right because the files I mean the size resolution has got higher but the brush is still the same size so therefore your brush that's making this in, if I increase the size it'll look like that All right so right now I want to retain this kind of fluid brush for, for a little bit longer okay, let's see that goes back let's make his ear drums so it doesn't have ears but it has these kind of reptilian type of um, sound echoing drums thing with a little transparent skin to pick up sound vibrations Okay, that comes down. Let's look for some nice fluid lines to build that into. I like this line that's formed here, so I'm going to see if I can build that into the rest of his body. I like some of the chunkification this guy is starting to have. Like he's got these sharp 90 degree lines uh, appearing on his body. It kind of looks nice, so I'm going to see if I can use that as a, as a form language. 
for example, his rib cage maybe could take on that uh, that look. Okay. Right, not a not a very human rib cage, but uh, rib cage nevertheless. So this will be soft tissue here. Comes down. It's all soft, no bone. This is the rib, which I indicate a little bit of uh, bones underneath. Then you have a clavicle going this way to join with the shoulder ball. Muscle pull this way, and muscle pull that way to swing the uh, the arm here. So I'm not following in 100% human anatomy here, but using similar uh, concepts to to animate him or to give him physical ability to move those muscle groups and it helps the riggers as well. Who's gonna rig your guy? for animation. Alright, so get that in there. I'm gonna make his arm really long. I mean technically speaking this arm is pretty long. That's a lot of weight for the shoulder to bear. So but the thing is again we're not going from a pure science kind of thing here. I think we're just going for pure visuals. But I don't think this joint here could actually operate an arm that's this heavy. <clears throat> this will probably have a lot more muscle mass, you know, like something something like to that degree uh, for that to work. But that kind of kills my form, I think. I could give him a bigger shoulder to try. I could give him a bigger, yeah, let's try that. Don't know if that looks good though. Just like a shoulder, shoulder blade to uh, to hold that socket a little bit more tighter or give it more strength because there's a ball and socket joint in here with the um, bone coming out that way maybe, don't know, it's kind of weird maybe it could work, alright let's see, let's go down here, soft belly some muscles here, go in, back ribs so some muscles that connect to the ribs bicep and triceps or whatever alien form of those muscles are elbow let's make these a little bit more interesting let's give these guys little little nubs just a third level detail stuff The first creature is hard to read, I think, because he faces that way, which is not very common for creature design. So you're looking at it going this way, so you, but you don't see a head, um, so a little weird, because you're most common seeing creatures in this in this perspective, or character designs. All right, we tend to see the front first. All right, details in there. Okay, give this guy a few more muscle lines. Soft tissue here. Let's, let's really carve out his stomach here. Okay, he's got a hip. Waist to hip to femur. Making this part a little bit more exaggerated. Just to build that nice interesting form big muscle group come down get to the thighs that will then connect into uh, the knee joint this guy's got a chicken leg joint which has got the reverse leg thing which is not in mammals so it adds an extra bone right there which sometimes in certain kind of um, productions uh, animators don't like that because he acts a it adds a bone that's not part of a uh, bipedal system so they have to add that in uh, by themselves and uh, if the system is not made to s simulate that animation it could cause problems like the guy walks with a slight funky wobble or something like that right so we call this chicken legging right because remember we in our real bone we have this and then that and then feet but this goes down to femur acts a miscellaneous bone and then go to uh, your legs right so this bone here is extra so and it bends backwards like kind of looks like a chicken so we call it a chicken leg some clients do not want that in their designs 
because they have, for example, their sharing a skeleton system. Um, because remember, skeleton systems are pretty uh, memory intensive in games. I don't know how it is now, but I can imagine it still takes up a lot of uh, memory because uh, if you're simulating we're doing all these animations. Every single one of the animations has to be stored in memory for the uh, game to be able to call it. So, uh, in games, they like to share the skeleton system. So they might have like one for four-legged creatures, like horses and dogs and stuff like that. Even though they're different creatures, they share the same system. Um, and then they have one for say humanoid-based creatures, and they all share the same skeleton. So if the game is like okay, anything big and humanoid will share the skeleton, then you add this extra bone in there, it wouldn't work. Then you have a unique system, and then every single animation has to be then restored or, or re-put into memory, which could be problems for certain games. They might not even have that much memory for that. So. So some some clients will actually be pretty specific and ask for is no chicken leg bone system to avoid that rigging system, right? But if the if the care if the game already has that, then that, that's fine. Okay, put that in. Let's see, bone joint. But it looks cool, you know. It's like it's it's used a lot in in design. I think I still use a lot today. Uh, it just kind of has a cool look to it. So it's pretty common that you get this, especially on like little devil creatures, like Diablo type creatures. Um, there's a lot of that kind of joint system going on. Okay. Watching my time and coming out in 10 minutes. So I'm gonna do probably pretty soon is shut this video um, and then take it offline for a few minutes on my own and get everybody drawn out so we don't spend too much time in real time. Okay, so this arm is going back. But you can see how quickly, let's just take out the one that wasn't cleaned just to see the difference here, right? So that's only 10 minutes later. We are already getting this result. Um, so you can imagine if you want a pretty, like a really tight drawing, you just spend another um, an hour or two on the drawing. Then you can actually end up with a very, very nice line drawing. And you don't have to paint it at all. all right, these guys are all naked. They're not wearing clothes, so. I guess it's okay. We could put costume. This guy could almost use a costume. He looks like he's intelligent enough to to be actually a um, intelligent being that could build things. So um, maybe we could put some costume in on him. Versus the guy next to him is like a dumb creature. It just like you know it doesn't doesn't really wear clothes. Even though like in the many black movies they look like that, but they could they could build spaceships. So. Now that's where the whimsical stuff comes in. It's like, how, how does this guy make a UFO? Okay, let's see. This guy's got these little thin fingers as well. Okay, also has little pads. This is where you could kill the animators if you want by giving them a ton of fingers. <clears throat> All right, five is already pretty hard to animate. Um, you could kill them by giving like seven fingers or something. They'll probably delete them out to save money. Okay. Like in games, they don't, most of the time they don't do this many fingers. They do like three. So it's like a mitten type of rigging system, you know, in which you have a human hand and you have these fingers. This one and this one and this one will be actually just three bones, you know. So you could all three fingers here animate using the same system to save memory. So that way, because that gives you enough to uh, to like hold weapons, for example, you know. But you can also have it out. You can also have it in and do this and point. So I don't know about nowadays. I think nowadays it's not maybe uh, skeletal animation is not that big of a deal anymore for memory storage. So maybe some of the guys working in industry um, on YouTube could uh, comment on that. I'm not sure. Okay, 12 minutes in. I think I need to cut this pretty soon. Let's just do a little bit more. Good thing about line drawing is that uh, there's not much memory in terms of the storage of this file as well as the video itself. Like if this was a painting, this this video right now at 12 minutes in will probably be already two gigs. Uh, but saving this file probably only be about 500 max, maybe less, because there just isn't that much data on the screen for um, for the store. Right, most of it's all white. It's like 90% of the page is still just white, so it's not, nothing really there. Right, all the negative spacing here is white, so file size is very, very small. Okay. It's got this kind of uh, reptilian, loose skin, 
texture here. Let's disarm the arm. Let's make sure this is touching the ground. So all, all four of his limbs are uh, touching the ground. Let's make this nice and strong, put a little joint in there. It's got four, three toes in the front, one in the back. Give it a little muscle here. Okay, cool. That works. Do the other side. So this joint comes over, comes in. Put that in there. Mirror the back. So again, this is a um, repeat repeat design here because this leg and this leg are the same leg. So we don't have to worry about over detailing it because they, the modeler will only just build it. I mean, they, when they build models in ZBrush, they'll do the same thing and they will mirror, they'll build with the symmetry on. So you do the same thing. We're doing the same exact thing as symmetry on. So one side is defined, the other side kind of just indicated because they're not in, in, in almost, I mean, all creatures on earth, pretty much everybody's symmetrical. So you do one side, the other side should be the same. Okay, delete ground lines. I do want some of it back just for perspective checks. That's the center of the creature. Let's do another checkpoint. Center point, center to center lines up. That we could check his CG if it's um, going to fall over or not. Let's see his hand. This little hand is a little bit closer to the leg than this one, but it's okay. See that distance is about that wide. Okay, pretty good hand position is relatively there. So this guy should be stable. Don't think it's going to fall. Okay. Because you want to like have a creature that's like like this or something, which he's front heavy or back heavy. And you could design a creature that's front heavy, back creature, uh, and uh, back heavy, but you just have to make sure you balance it out using its uh, its own designs, like a tail or uh, a big horn on top of his head or something, something to counterweight that uh, offset. Okay, like a tiger, you know, prowling around or something. Then the you know you have a spinal cord like this, and got leg like this, like this, then the back like that. Then you have a tail that acts as a counterweight uh, to that body. <coughs> so that's what I'm talking about here, right? Make make everything feel nice and fluid. Okay, all right. So I think this guy is good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pause the video now and uh, do the last guy, which is I think this guy. Oh, totally forgot about him, and uh, draw him in the same manner, and then come back to you guys in a second. All right, let's uh, pause. Stop. All right, I am back. So this is where we left off. So the um, rightmost image is not done. So let me just open up the um, the other images. Let's see. I think let's see. All right, so here it is. So I just put another um, again about ten minutes worth of work uh, into doing the line work. Uh, these are not super super tight precise line drawings but I think they're um, good enough to get you guys to see where it could lead to and I also open up some examples of what uh, other things you can do once you have this step done so let me just open up another one so I took this kind of image here and uh, let's see open up these spend another maybe 25 minutes or so just putting some values this is actually really, really simple to do I'll turn off the layers and show you what's been done here so let's see all right so here's a line drawing just converted the uh, the uh, line art to be not red but kind of a brown color i'll zoom in a bit you can see and uh, all it is is just a series of layers so you got a gradient uh, you got just a background drop shadow base layer uh, shadow highlight key lights uh, bounce light um, highlights and uh, patterns and those kind of things so that's it i mean this is a quick and dirty method it's it's good enough to show uh, some stuff to your clients it's not necessarily done uh, but i will show you some uh, images using uh, done using this technique so let me see let me open these up here uh, kind of a variance of what you could do with this kind of stuff All right and as these images are loaded, to remind you guys uh, that we are updating our website. So hopefully in about a month or two months, we'll have a larger community uh, of Design Cinema. We're going to have, you know, because I know we get a lot of questions and all these comments that we could not uh, possibly get to uh, due to just uh, it's uncontrolled on YouTube. So what we're going to try to do is bring that kind of stuff over to our website instead, you know, fcdschool.com, uh, and try to address it over there as well as uh, a bunch of other content that's going to be available for all our design cinema uh, viewers so anyways here are some images that I've done 
using this technique. So here's uh, you know some uh, zombie girl creatures or something like that. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Uh, some line sketching, which is very similar to what we've done, just to show you the, the different kind of finishing levels you could achieve uh, by starting out the same way, right? Because the beginning is the most difficult part. So here's a some uh, witch doctor designs or something like that. Here's some robots, almost exactly the same as what we did uh, today, as you can see here. Uh, these are even quicker, actually done uh, extremely fast. Here's what you could do if you want to paint it up, right? So here's some like skeleton characters and stuff like that um, with some texture stuff. But the starting point is very similar uh, in the same way, right? Um, same thing, you could paint it up with grayscale. This method here is a similar method as the zombie girls over here, right? Using uh, the same stuff. Here's an, these two are also related. These are some of the stuff I did a while back. Uh, these are all demos for our students, actually. So I'm not showing you guys any professional work in terms of they're not for clients. These are all um, demos done in front of our students. So, but just showing you guys a, a range. You know, once you have the uh, the kind of method down, you could do whatever you want with it, right? Here's a here's a painting of a creature, kind of smoking a pipe. Here, here's another painting of a creature. Right, and all these are really, really fast. So because they're live demos, so none of these go over two hours. So they're all done underneath that time. Uh, here's one in which we just did a drawing, right? So you can see this, this is a character though, not a creature. Here's some other creature design. This one painted up with some silhouettes. This one's also painted. So this stage, what you see in this black and white image here, right, with these kind of um, gorilla type uh, creatures or something. This is the very next stage of what I could have done with, uh, if I could find it back here, this image here, because I already have the base. You can see if I turn all this off, there it is. That's that's the base right here, all right? So using this, you can actually get to this one fairly quickly. I think this will take another, maybe a two hours, somewhere around that time, you know, two and a half hours, you could get from a line drawing to completely uh, painted out values without any lines at all. Because these ones, if you zoom in, there, there are no line work uh, at all anymore. But they started with line drawings. Uh, it's very, you know, exactly the same as, um, as this technical over here. So let's see what else I have in here. Here's another one, bit of a rendering. The guy riding on a big camel, uh, bird-like, whatever creature. Um, let's see. I think should have a few more, that's that one already. Okay, I think that's all the examples I kind of just pulled to show you guys of the type of things you could do if you start out loose, get your design down, do some quick line work, get your overall form developed in 3D, because once you have an object in 3D, then you can apply lighting, right? Because all this kind of stuff I'm showing you from, uh, let's just go through, like things like this or like this is all dependent on your forms. You have to know exactly what your shapes are doing. And then, I mean, that, that just makes your work so much easier when you're doing this kind of uh, process. So anyways, so hopefully you guys uh, continue to subscribe, watch our uh, channels, and just keep your eyes open for when we launch our new website with all the cool community content. Uh, of course, everything will be free as well. So there's not going to be any kind of, you know, we're not trying to monetize design system or anything like that. So hopefully you enjoyed this quick episode. This is um, pretty light, I think. Uh, next week, I'll see if I could get to a little bit heavier one, maybe with characters. Well, not next week, probably in two weeks from now. Uh, we'll do something. But it's term break, so I should be having some time to, uh, to develop a little bit more design cinema stuff. So in the meantime, if you guys have questions, uh, continue to uh, ask them in YouTube because we do see it. As you can see, my um, the memory on this computer is completely dying out. Uh, continue to ask it because we will see it and we'll try to address that once our website is launched in a more common or easier reach uh, section. So until then, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I will see you guys um, on the next one. All right, bye.